Okay, Hex, let's rewind time back to a fictional reality at the height of the Cold War. There's tension between the superpowers as they both compete with each other in a race to the moon. Yes, but the twist is that instead of trying to land on the moon, they're in a race to try and be the first one to blow it up. Not exactly the best idea, but I guess these superpowers have more missiles than sense. And that's where you come in, a super spy trying to stop them in Counter Spy. <laughs> seen that many Cold War games, have we, Hex? I guess coil tension and intrigue aren't the simplest of gaming ingredients, and that makes Counter Spy a nice change of pace. Yeah, it certainly feels unique. I think part of it is because the cell shaded graphics have such a stylized look to them, especially the spy himself, who takes every opportunity to pose dramatically. I noticed the creative director had previously worked at Pixar on films like The Incredibles, which makes a lot of sense because the look of this game has a lot in common with that film, which is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Any connection to The Incredibles is good in my books. I also appreciated all the visual touches. Like the way the propaganda posters really suit the era and how the sides of the screen are curved like an old-fashioned TV. The game itself is partly a 2D stealth -em up there are plenty of opportunities for silenced shots, security cameras to disable, sneaky choker holds, and some great looking judo chops. Yes, but the game abruptly switches from 2D to a third person shooter, which surprised me at first. <laughs> Whenever you take cover, the perspective spins around and gives you a crosshair to blast enemies with. I really like this idea, going from 2D to 3D. I feel like it's a natural evolution from games like Shadow Complex that did that 2.5D thing quite well. But I don't think they nailed it. I think the controls are just a bit too clunky. I thought so too. I mean, not being able to move around at all while shooting just reminded me of those old Resident Evil and Metal Gear games that would nail your feet to the floor every time you pulled your gun out. Show yourself! But it's even more rigid here because you can only go into that aiming mode when you're standing next to cover. Yeah, that's frustrating, but the worst is when you're being shot at from someone who's off in the background, because then you've got to go and find a bit of cover to get next to just so you can shoot back. Uh, no, the worst is when an enemy you can't even see raises the alarm with his radio. But when you're in these multi-level rooms with loads of enemies, getting to the one that's on the radio to silence him can be pretty much impossible. It's so frustrating, especially when that alarm triggers a missile launch. Yeah, I crazy raged at those alarms a few times, but I think we should give some context to the missile launches. Your main aim in each level is to infiltrate a top-secret missile facility and deactivate its launch capability. So you're kind of like a UN peacekeeper spy who's trying to defuse the conflict, and you do this by sneaking behind enemy lines on both sides of the war. And both superpowers will start at DEFCON 5, which is army talk for everything's cool. But when you make mistakes, like being spotted by cameras or being killed in action, or not stopping the guys raising that alarm I mentioned, then the DEFCON status will be raised, which is bad. Yes, and if it gets to DEFCON 1, that means those fingers are poised right over the red button. Ah! Getting caught at DEFCON 1 triggers a 60-second countdown to the missile's launch, which normally means game over. But the handful of times I was able to shoot my way through and cancel that launch in time was pretty awesome. The real problem for me was that the stealth was so inconsistent. The game rewards you for being stealthy with all sorts of score multipliers, and classic sneaky moves like pulling guards off ledges were pretty satisfying. But there were times I went into rooms where I was spotted before I even moved. Yeah, this game has a lot of rough edges. For example, trying to throw a grenade back is way too fiddly. And why is the same button used for commander rolling as well as going into cover? It's madness! Even so, I quite enjoyed this game, and the moment I finished it, I wanted to go back through for a second playthrough to unlock all those guns. Oh, the guns were great. I mean, when you've got something called the Treaty Violator, who's not going to want to unlock that? And there's also the dart gun, which confuses enemies so they start attacking each other. Hiding behind cover while they do the work for you is always good fun. What are your overall thoughts, Hex? Well, I loved the art style and the fact that the levels are randomly generated, but like I mentioned earlier, that flawed stealth just undermined it for me, so I'm giving it six. Yeah, it's a bit broken in places, but there is satisfying gameplay here. Plus, I felt like I was genuinely getting better with each retry, so I found that a bit compelling. I'm giving it seven and a half. And now, here's Goose with the news.